The Doddler's Philosophy. Snippets. Just a taste. Blaze, what is science? Asking the quote-unquote philosopher what science is. To you. Well, I mean, I guess who who else would know? Scientists don't care about definitions of their terms. <laughs> All right, what was the question? What is science? Science is the attempt to extract precise information from the world through the means of intentional ignoring, setting up situations that isolate variables, attempt to ignore or block out other influences, and then often, parentheses on parentheses, applying numbers to that, to what was extracted. So it has to do a lot with empiricism, experiment, and m mathematizing. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, yeah. It's my turn to do philosophy now. Good luck. <laughs> uh, ph <laughs> philosophy, falafel-y. Um Shit, what is philosophy? Philosophy is the almost structured thinking about to an extent the world but also very much thinking about ideas you know philosophy to me as a dumb ignoramus quote unquote scientist is is kind of um you know it's it's focused on on generating uh an understanding or a deep understanding about ideas so the, it seems to me that in philosophy, the focus is ideas and when it comes to ideas, how they pertain uh, within themselves to some kind of internal consistency. You know, like, do, do the ideas themselves make sense? Um, so it sort of seems very internalized. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. This is fun. <laughs> yeah. No, so the I, first obvious distinction that comes out of those two definition attempts is that science is outward looking and philosophy is inward looking. Yeah, right. I think so. I think that's when one of the, yeah. Right. How can one do either of those things without the other? Mm, well, I mean... It's a good question because I would say that science, uh, yeah, because I mean, how would you work with the ideas, the framework uh, in science without understanding the ideas themselves? But as you said, we ignore things in science, and so there tend that you can kind of say, um, well, you know, ceteris paribus or whatever. You can always just say, well, we'll just kind of hold these constant or it kind of ignore these parts of this whole idea and just kind of work on a, another part of it. Um, you know, uh, you know, simplest examples are usually just physics 101 experiments or whatever. Um, and just sort of just seeing how the world deviates from you know, world you set up where there's no friction or, you know, like, uh, so that's sort of what I was thinking. You mean physics 101 thought experiments then? If there's no friction? Well, no, because like, if there's no friction, you can still like use the math to kind of set up a prediction expectation and see how it might deviate if when you actually take a ball and roll it down a slope of some kind or what, you know what I mean? You can kind of see what the prediction of how long it would take you know, and you can sort of 
that's sort of where you sort of remove things from the overall picture. And, and I guess that allows you to explore different parts of systems and ideas. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. But in, is it not the case that in every laboratory experiment, we experience a non-zero amount of friction? Correct. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. But so, you, okay. Are you making a third distinction between thought experiment, laboratory experiment, and mathematical formula? I guess you'll have to tell me what you're thinking when you say the word thought experiment. Uh, words thought experiment. I was just envisioning there's a difference between when the teacher faces the students and grabs his little red ball and rolls it down the little wooden chute he built last week while yelling at his dog in, in the backyard versus turning his back to the students, grabbing his marker, going to the whiteboard, and writing things. On the whiteboard, you can put symbols together and just not write friction in there or write friction equals zero. And that I, that's all I meant in this case by thought experiment, that we're dealing with ideas or whatever, the symbols on the board and not the balls and the wooden shoots in the classroom. Yeah, I guess I never really thought about thought experiments and math equations as being somewhat equivalent or whatever. Because I always thought about ex uh, thought experiments as being somewhat of a bit of a story almost. And math doesn't seem to be as much of a story. Yeah, Math is totally a story. <laughs> it's a story I tell to myself that it's stupid. No. Um, you mean, are you being serious? Are you thinking like, yes, these are stories? I think you know, I think that. Okay. <laughs> I'm not committed to it, but when I when it comes up, I'm like, yeah, that sounds all right. I think I can get behind that, too. I just, I mean, it sounds all right. It doesn't sound great, you know? <laughs> well, okay, so what's the... A, a, Einstein is the big thought experiment guy, and he's like, all right, well, imagine you're in an elevator shooting through space or whatever, right? Like That's yeah. what you're thinking of as thought experiments. I guess. But how is how are those kind of Einsteinian tales significantly different than, all right, well, pretend there's this thing that is pure quantity. It's just this... W two and then there's this operation plus and then there's another two it's not like i'm not talking about apples and oranges here it's just these platonic absolutes out there you know that's like einsteinian uh a train that's moving at the speed of light and getting shot by lightning at both ends or what you know ones and twos and threes are as fictional as frictionless planes right um, I, I, yeah, but the thing that I was thinking about was, um, when it comes to the stories of trains and elevators and stuff like that, those are sort of these much more, I guess they're more like thought experience experiments to me then seem like they're more concretized or some, something like, it seems at least that's what I thought they were was more concrete examples so that someone can imagine themselves in an elevator or they can imagine a train going by or, you know, whatever it is, allowing the ideas to be grounded in something that other people around you might be able to also say they, they understand or whatever. And then the math is a much more ex abstract, generalized version of what, you know, could be a train or a elevator or whatever. Um, and then that, abstract idea then gets applied to various other things like um you know uh the the force of gravity in you know in, in, at a you know much larger scale like you know a sun or something like that and its effect on planets and whatnot um but we so we promise this was totally organic that we like it's gonna look after the next thing that gets said that we did that this was all scripted because it's so perfect <laughs> but it just happened and now i'm sitting here thinking we are exemplifying to perfection the distinction between science and philosophy in this discussion about thought experiments and i'm going to use again uh episode eight a korzybskian phrasing and talk about extensional or intentional orientations the scientist has the extensional orientation, which is 
Ryan tonight, and what I think you're doing in this thought experiment conversation is you're thinking about, well, what are all of the places that I have run into other chimps tokening the term? Thought, here's a thought experiment, then what follows? What have people pointed out and labeled thought experiments? You're taking a survey, you're looking outside, mm -hmm. and what is the extension of the term thought experiments? Here's one, there's one, there's one. The Harlan, the philosopher over here, is trying to see through all of that and distill out the essence. What really is what makes a thought experiment in the most general and abstract sense? And if you try to make that sort of abstract definition, then the you know this particular philosopher oriented person notices, oh, well, wouldn't that also apply to math? Maybe math is a thought experiment, you know. But and since that particular idea is not prevalent in Ryan's society, he checks his extension matrix and it's like math is not part of this. I've never heard math called a thought experiment. Nope. <laughs> you know, and I th isn't that a good example of the difference between someone who generally uh, goes comes from science or comes from philosophy? I'm going to say like half yes. And the reason why is because I I guess I'm pretty ignorant about what the philosophers would say. You know, like I would say, yeah, okay, I feel like that's sort of a good description of scientists uh, to an extent in terms of just sort of the general dynamic, you know? But I don't know. Is that what philosophers do? I suppose in some ways they probably do. But you know, philosophers as being these people who like are trying to generalize down to the <laughs> essence, which I don't know if that's the right word for it. We're just trying to get to the heart of the matter and then be able to like, I, I don't know. Like, it's funny because I just described that, but said like, that was the math. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, oh yeah, that was the math behind the general theory of relativity. <clears throat> the thought experiment was the concretized, not abstract one uh example of the elevator and all that kind of stuff and then um yeah and so that was kind of how i was thinking and then you could apply these this mathematical approach to all these things and then you come around and you're like hey i'm doing that to this you know like it's sort of like well wait a minute though like isn't the math being done that way and aren't you just saying look i'm just doing it without the math in a way because you're saying uh, you know, you're trying to generalize. And that's, I thought, what the math was trying to do about the, some physical problem or whatever. And then you get, like, very specific examples that are trying to communicate that idea. And so I don't know what your definition of thought experiment would be, but then you would say, okay, well, it applies here in this situation where we're talking about ele elevators, and it applies here when we talk about math and pluses and equal signs and stuff. So it's interesting that you say that because then there is a... Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's the extensional part is that scientists do the philosophy and the math and they don't know they're doing the philosophy. I'm not, not math. They do the philosophy and the science and they don't realize that when they're doing the philosophy, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, the, the philosopher Dan Dennett once said to the scientist, Doug Hofstadter, anything you can do. I